Here's my second prototype of my heated chicken water bowl. So I've got the uh, water bowl at the bottom. It allows for about three inches of water. Um, probably more I could do because um, DC doesn't uh, short circuit underwater. <clears throat> so it doesn't really matter if this gets covered, I don't believe. Um, so what I did was I, I already had this guy in here. I screwed on this board to lift up the electronics of the unit up higher to keep it out of range of the chickens pecking at it and uh, just uh, a little easier to access. Um, so what I have here, um, I have so the DC timer is here. I've got this all set up for the day and time. I have it configured uh, to turn on at 7.30 in the morning every day of the week and turn off at 8 a.m. in the morning every day of the week. So that gives it a half hour runtime. I've got that wired through to the thermal sensor, which is configured. Um, I've got not, not got it plugged in right now, but it's configured to turn on only if it's minus five or lower, because um, that's when I have uh, problems keeping the wire defrosted. I'll try that and see how it goes. Um, the the thermistor for that uh, is down here. I've got it kind of halfway between the top and the bottom because uh, it does get colder down at the ground obviously but I don't want it to be too close to where the chickens might get pecking at it so I just set it there freely um, apart from the wood um, so that should sense the temperature accurately enough and then I just uh, tape the wiring on the back of the board and then um, I've got the extension cord here and this will plug into my alligator clips that I have on my battery so I'm going to go plug that in. It's minus 20 today. Um, so we should see the, thir uh, the thermal switch uh, being marked as on, open, it's open circuit. Um, however, this on auto um, will be closed, so it won't be fired up. So what I'll be interested in seeing is tomorrow morning, um, I'll come down, look at the chicken set shed, and see if this uh, turned itself on at 730. Um, all other, thing, all other things being equal, assuming the temperature is below 5, and I'm sure it will be. So, well, what I'm going to do to protect this, this is a little bit redneck, but uh, i got a Ziploc bag. So, I'll just uh, I'll show you what I'm doing here. It's hard to do with one hand here. I'm just going to put a Ziploc bag over it. Um, and that just keeps the, uh, the water off it, anything that might be dripping. Um, it'll actually... Uh, keep a bit of its own heat in as well. Um, there is heat produced uh, by the electronics so that'll keep a bit of the heat in um, but it doesn't affect the uh, thermistor because uh, that's below the bag. I actually didn't uh, think about that when I was placing that but that works out well. So the bag will just keep it a little bit protected from the weather or whatever's in the shed. Um, I may, may tape that once I get comfortable with this setup, I may tape that because I really shouldn't need to configure the, uh, the electronics anymore. And uh, we'll see how that works. Now, in about 30 minutes worth of time, it defrosted maybe a third of the, uh, the water. It's hard to say because the bottom of the water, underneath the ice, it was still water. So it's hard to say, but it opened up a good enough area like this, if I can show it there. Uh, big enough for that the chickens can get a drink and that's that's what I'm after obviously so I'm gonna go with that and see if this works and uh, this is a uh, prototype number two so I'm just gonna try setting this up hopefully you won't just see my bottom the whole time um, the water bowl down here has a layer of ice already it's uh, 20 below I'm gonna plug in uh, heated water bowl. I'm gonna plug in my uh, my alligator clamps first. All right, I'm gonna plug this in. I'll show you what it's reading first off took this off. So, first thing is that the uh, thermal switch is showing 9.5. Um, might be a little colder than that. We'll see if it keeps going down or not. 
It's about minus 15 or 17 outside, but it's warmer in the chicken shed. You notice the LED off to the right is on. That means the switch is opened. So that's correct so far. It's below minus 5. I want that switch to be open. Um, however, um, the red light's not on my DC timer because it's not, not uh, 7.30 in the morning. So that's good. So my, uh, my immersion water heater is not turned on right now. So I'm going to go place this in the uh, shed here, or, sorry, in the uh, coop area. Let's see how it goes here. I hope this wire reaches. I think it will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one first. And there you go. There is water under there, but it's... It's uh, about a centimeter frozen, centimeter, maybe two centimeters frozen on top. <coughs> so I do have, I do come down here three times a day, anyways. So I'm not too concerned about it not, uh, not running during the day, because I can just uh, take my pitchfork and smash that top ice, and then the, as long as it's uh, thin enough, the chickens can usually. I peck through the top layer of ice. The Shawnee flares are especially good at uh, pecking through the top layer of ice. Um, and if I, if I come down three times a day, which I do anyways, usually, um, I can smash that top layer. I'm really only concerned at this point about um, about defrosting the solid frozen ice in the morning before I get down here. So that's what I'm concerned about. So I got it set in here, minus 11 it's showing, so it went down a little bit. So I'm going to put the bag over, over top so I don't splash it, splash the electronics. And then I'm going to fill it up with water. Oh, one thing I should do is... Uh, Set that to auto. Uh, yep. It is set to auto, automatic right now, the DC timer. So that is what I want. Let's straighten out this cord. I really need a longer cord. This is uh, prototype number two, though. All right, now I will get the water. Let's see. Smash this one here, and I'm gonna smash the smash some of the other water. All right, fill this up here. Alright, that's filled up. Now I don't care that I poured ice into it because that ice is going to be defrosted. And um, so the chickens should be able to crack the top layer um, for the, you know, for a couple of hours anyways. And then come lunch or whatever, if, you know, when it's minus 20 out, um, then I'll, I'll come down and smash the big layer of ice. And they'll have a drink. So they'll, they'll be getting at least They'll be able to drink for, uh, you know, three times a day at least anyways. Worst case scenario, you know, when it's minus 20. I'll show you what the temperature is in the coop. The, uh, the thermal switch was saying minus 11. My cheap thermometer says, yeah, minus 11, minus 12. And uh, so for the Sean Claire, as you can see, well, it's probably about time for me to smash their water too. They usually do a good job of smashing it though. The ice. So I'll smash that. This is showing... Oh, minus... I turned off the video by mistake. This is showing... Minus 14 there. You can see it through the, the plastic. Minus 13. Okay, it warmed up a little bit. So that's from the thermistor that's on the back. Uh, which they can't get to too easily. 
Hopefully they won't be uh, interested in that. So there it is. There's my cheaper than co-op heated water bowl running off solar energy. And uh, it does, the, the electronics do pull a little bit of power, especially the uh, thermal switch. Um, but it's not, you know, it's milliamps. Um, as you can see right now, it's a sunny day. Anytime it's minus 20, you know, or, or minus 15 or, or 20, it's usually going to be, it's usually minus 15 or 20 because it's clear, the skies are clear. When the skies are clear during the day, that means you have great solar. So when it's really cold, it's usually also great for solar energy anyways. Um, so you can see I'm at 13.6. I did run it this morning for about 30 minutes. And uh, if I look at that uh, voltage, it's recovered nicely. It's not quite topped off yet because it'll probably get to 14, 15 volts uh, to top it off. Um, but it's only uh, 10.30 in the morning or something right now. There's a, a ton of solar power coming in right now. So I'm not concerned about that at all. So I'll, I'll do an update video um, tomorrow. If I'll bring my iPad, iPad down and take a video of it. And we'll just see... Uh, if it's defrosted enough for the chickens to uh, drink some water.